Hi folks, I made some improvements to this uh, motor generator and I'd like to show them to you. And here's basically the motor generator as it, as it is. I've developed it up to this point. And you can see uh, that's a six inch wheel, magnet wheel, and it's an uh, inch and a quarter wide. It has eight equally spaced N48, 38 uh, uh, three quarter inch diameter, three eighths inch thick magnets. And then, like I said, they're evenly spaced all the way around it. Okay, and um, the axle information. I have a, that's a quarter inch diameter, one, uh, 12 inches long carbon fiber. Uh, it's a solid rod. There's two skate wheel, wheels with two bearing supports. Skate wheels. And the bearings right in here, bearing over on the other side uh, supports. The spread is 8 inches here to here, 7 inches from the baseboard up to here. Okay, and let's see. Uh, you know, these are 8 millimeter uh, bearings. And if you notice, I'm using a quarter inch rod. So it means I have to have something inside of here. And I have a reducer spacers in here. McMaster car sells them. And they're uh, the 5 sixteenths uh, outside diameter, quarter inch inside diameter, fits inside an 8 millimeter uh, skate bearing. And I have one here and one here. I didn't, I didn't put both two bearings in both wheels. I just put the one bearing, the outside bearing here and the outside bearing over there. And let's see what else here I could talk about. Uh, you're going to need a bunch of quarter inch shaft collars too, like this. There, I have them all around here. I think it's about six of them I have. And the power box information. Uh, you can find all that information for the power box on the schematic uh, diagrams I have posted on a lot of links. And uh, let's see, the Pittsfield uh, plastic, Pittsfield plastics has the six and a half inch uh, coil. Uh, it's a utility spool that you could wind that. Uh, coil with. And, uh, uh, you know, use only one uh, LED lamp instead of four in the series shown on the blueprint. You only need one lamp. You don't need this four like I have on the blueprint. And it's got to have a E27 base, standard screw-in base. And it doesn't make no difference what kind of lamp you have. I have three and a half inches. I had a five, uh, three and a half, uh, three and a half watt. Uh, 5 watt, 7 watt, 8 watt, didn't make no difference because all it does is split the voltage that's coming out of uh, the, the power, uh, the output of that power box. This is the output right here. This is the input right here. So you got the input, output. And it's splitting, this, this, this is being split, the voltage is being split, 80 volts by the way, is being split 40, uh, uh, to the lamp and 40 to the uh, buck step down converter module. That's a buck step down converter module. I'm going to show you how that works in about a minute. And you need wood risers or some type of, you can use coasters to space up from here, from the baseboard up to the bottom of the coil to keep find a sweet spot on, on, between the wheel and the, and the top of the coil. So you could use a bunch of wooden coasters or paper coasters, that make a bunch of difference, or a piece of wood. And that's how you're going to find that, and elevate or lower the, the coil. And let's see what else I'm doing. I'm, I'm looking at notes here and I'm going through the things so I try to get this. Now, I have a double pull, double throw switch on this. The input right here, is goes to the center taps, right here. The output for this can go one of two ways. It, it could switch over and I can, that's how I'm going to pick up my 27 volt, 24 volts right here. If I throw the lever this way, it's 20, 24 volts will be going right to the power box. But I thought it'd be interesting to see what would happen if I have the output which happens to be 24 volts, 
80 volts is split between here and here, so I got 40. This steps down to 40 to 24. So I got 24 volts here, as you'll see very shortly. And I thought maybe if I take that voltage, I could put it back into the power box and recycle the energy. Well, it didn't work out that way. <laughs> Anyways, the key to this whole thing right here needs further development, and that's where you step in if you care to make one of these uh, motor generators. If you could figure that out, boy, that'd be something, I'll tell you. Because right here is, is the answer. You get power coming out of here, but how to utilize it and re redirect it back into the box to make it recycle, that's another story. Okay, so, uh, let's see what else. I can't comment about that. Uh, I'm going to publish the speed, the watt ratings later. I, I'll, I'll show you the speed. I, I've got my tack here. I could show you the speed. But the, the tack, uh, as far as uh, I'm going to hook the fan up later and take uh, power measurements later on. I didn't want to clutter this whole thing up with a bunch of meters and wires and stuff like that. I just want to keep it simple. So, uh, let's see. I told you about uh By the way, this lamp is supposed to light at 80 volts. It won't light because, and you'll see, it won't light because it's not getting 80 volts, it's being split, it's only got 40 volts. And that's applicable to the rest of the lamps. Some of the lamps, whether it be uh, 3 watt or 4 watt, 5, 10, making a difference, 8, will light up. Some won't. So don't worry about it. As long as it does it, it's doing a job of splitting up this voltage that I could see, 40-40. And then what's coming out here is 24. So now let's get started. Let's, let's work this thing here. Okay, the first thing I want to do is hook up. Get this right. Now I, I got 24 volts on it. And I'm going to try working this camera so that you can see. Now you've seen this, how this thing's working. I'm going to try zooming in on just that. Uh, let me see here. Get it down here. To zoom. That's going to show up, but anyways, that's uh 20 23.9 24 volts right there. And I'm going to show you that that's the output voltage of this right now. Okay, I hope the heck that shows up better than what it's showing here. Uh, let, me, let me jockey this camera around a little bit better. I don't want to move this thing. Up. wanted to show you what it's doing. There's 24 volts right there. Now, I'm going to show you the input voltage to this thing. There's 40.2 volts. That's the input. That's a buck converter. It works from 20, uh, from 40 to all, all the way down to about 3 or 4 or something like that volts. As long as the, odd, the input or the Input is greater than the output. It works. <laughs> let me let me switch over again. There we go. 24 volts. Now you can see why I, I was trying to uh, uh, take the, that, the out, which is the output of that box right now, and and reapply it to the input, but it didn't work. You'll see that in about two seconds when I throw that switch, it just falls off. So, uh, let me go back here and redo this again. Get back out of here. I'm working with the camera. I'm doing this by myself here. See the 
Let me get this all together here. Okay. Now we're back here. Let's see, I'm gonna take a canter of my notes, see what else here. Uh, if you remove that buck converter, you take it completely out, which I did already, that speed will drop 100 RPM. In other words, the light is would be carrying at all. Now in this case, this light, particular light here, won't light up. I don't for whatever reason. But nevertheless, another good indication is over here. If you see that uh, your neon light, if you see that lighting up, it means there's a lot of electricity being backed up in those caps right there. That lights up. Right now, there's no light in there. It's not. Nothing's being backed up. Everything's being used. From so. Let's go and let's do some measurements for uh, RPM. And I, I, I think yesterday it was something like, I found it was a 24, 26 something, 26, 40, something like that, RPM. But I'll get it, I'll stick a, stick a meter in here and see if we go, got going here. Twenty-six thirty. There we go. I hope I'm getting this on the camera. It's twenty-six thirty. Twenty-six thirty-two. So, if anybody's interested in making this, they're going to have their a time in their life uh, because it does one thing. Uh, very well. Like a conventional motor, when you increase, uh, when you put a load on a conventional motor, uh, the watt power is used, uh, it goes up. You put a, a load on this, which I'm going to plan on doing in the future, I'm going to put a fan on it right there. And instead of the, the speed will decrease, granted, but the watt power goes not up, it goes down as you put a load on it. And that's the that's the beauty of this thing. And if someone is bright enough and figures a way to use the output of this box here and convert it directly, I mean not through that, that light's burning up, the, the, the little lights are burning up there, and something's being used in here. If you could find a way to directly use that power. And, cert and work it down to 24 volts once more and reapply it into the input, uh, you'll have, you'll have um, <laughs> made something that's called over unity. I don't want to say perpetual motion, but it's over unity. So you might ask too, another thing is, where's all this electricity coming from? We got magnets over here that are breaking, uh, that are working through a coil. And it's, not a transformer, it's just a simple coil. There's no iron core in this thing, by the way. So, it's working differently. It's, it's all air core. That is air core. Uh, well, I'm going to shut, shut it, I'm going to shut it down. Throw this up. Now it's shut down. Now watch, I'm going to try to slap it over here. See, it'll still spool down. I don't think it has enough current to do the job. Sure had the voltage, but I think it needs a little bit more current to do the job. Now I'm gonna let it spool down the whole way so you get an idea how this thing goes. By the way, if I if I throw it the other way now it'll just start spooling up again because it's, it'll be hooked up directly to the power source. That wheel is perfectly balanced by the way. In perfect balance. And you're gonna find out with that carbon rod that is extremely stiff, lighter than aluminum, stronger than steel, and the best thing I've ever used in making this. So I would, they're not ex too, ex too cheap. I've used aluminum, but I like to keep metal, most metal away from it. The shaft collars you'll have to go with either plastic or aluminum. I use aluminum. And uh, I don't want no iron up there above that coil to detract from uh, anything. So, and these, uh, these supports here, all I did is get a skate wheel drill a hole on the bottom but screw the threaded rod in and that's how I made those. 
you got to make sure that they're aligned up correctly with one another so you can reference a rod that goes right through dead center, which I did. It took a little bit of doing to do that. But uh, outside of that, I'm happy. Um, if you want to tinker with something, you like electronics and stuff like that, or you, you're looking to have a, your, uh, a project to, for your, your child to go into a, a competition and school science project, buddy, this is it right here. This is it. I'm telling you. Uh, my kids, uh, my grandchildren aren't really interested in it, so if they were, that would be their project. I'd have them uh, replicate it on their own because the kids have to do that and submit it. They already know how it works. I, I've instructed them how it works, but uh, they're not into, they're not big into mechanics or doing anything with their hands. They're more into technical stuff, using their heads, figuring out equations and stuff like that. Me, I like to tinker and I like the work and uh, I was a retired aircraft, a commercial aircraft mechanic so this comes pretty easy to me to do. Some people might find it hard but uh, there's always someone that's, that could do this. It pretty much spooled down the whole way now. See how it takes forever to go down and I'm, I'm over here yakking away waiting for this thing to spool down. I don't know what else I could really tell you about it, except uh, I'm still working on this end of the thing. I want this to try to, I got to do something to see if I can increase that speed. That means I'm using the power, more of the power from the output, putting it back in the input and, and making a difference in my, in the speed of the, of the motor, which happens to be. I could have put a lamp there before a 5 watt lamp and it'll lit up if I'd have taken these wires right here loose because like I said it's in parallel. There's, it comes in here, goes over to here. This is in parallel with that. So if I took these wires loose, which I did yesterday, I lost 200 or 100 uh, RPM. So I've stuck them back in there and I'll leave well enough alone. There we go. And I, I'll start it up again and then I think I'll call it a, a day and I'm open for comments and whatever you have to say. So here we go. We're going to start it up again. And this is a input right here connected to this. There's my 24 volts right here. But you have to start with a finger. There we go. It takes a little while to spoil. By the way, right, let me digress a little bit on this. That the, the larger the wheel, the more torque you have. The smaller the wheel, the, the less torque you have, the higher the speed. There's a trade-off. And I find out this six, width, six inch wheel is pretty nice. It has a lot of torque. It's not real small. Easy to work with. You could drill out. It's a phenolic. You could drill it out with a, with a good uh, carbon steel drill. And uh, you space out. You have to do work carefully. All you need is a shop, uh, a shop drill press. And that's all you need, and uh, and the drill itself, and uh, and of course the magnets. And oh, I, I got to say, tell you again, uh, all the stuff you see here can be got from several several uh, places. Okay. Uh, you can get it from eBay, McMaster Car, Radio Shack, Magnets for Less, or your local hardware store. So let me let me end it right here, folks, and I'm open for comments and whatever else you have to say. Thanks for watching.